Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and this is the start of an ARC reading vlog. <laughs> So if you don't know what ARCs are, ARCs are advanced reader copies. So they're books that are sent to people early before publication date in the hopes of promoting the book and writing a review about the book so it gets buzzed before it's released. This is going to be an ARC vlog, which I've never done before, I don't think, um, because ARCs aren't really my thing because I get very stressed out about them and very anxious about them and it... It just, it's not my jam, you know, but I've been seeing my friends like getting early releases of certain books like off of NetGalley and I'm like, I wish I could do that. I wish I could love NetGalley. It's just like, I get so excited and I ask for all these books and then I don't get approved and then I get approved for a bunch of them and then they all come flooding in at once and then I get super anxious and just leave the site. That's what happened last time. I left the site. I think I have like a 20% like feedback rate or whatever. Um, <laughs> right now I just left the site. I saw that like an anticipated release of mine was coming out this year and it was on NetGalley and I was like, I really want it. I've already been denied it, so I'm not gonna talk about it. I was denied for it. <laughs> but um, I found two other books that I applied for. One of the ones is the one I'm just gonna talk about in a second. And another one um, is one I have not gotten a response back from. I feel like I just put in like three requests and hopefully that's better than asking for 10 all at once and getting super excited. But I really wanted to make this series of videos. I'm guessing there's gonna be more videos in this series of mine and I don't know how many books I'm gonna have in this video specifically, but I'm going to be just vlogging my experience reading these arcs. Almost all of them have already come out at this point. <laughs> And I absolutely love how authors sometimes will reach out to me and ask me to review a book for them. I want to read it. It sounds super interesting. Whenever an author like asks me to read a book, I definitely want to read it. It's just, it's so hard for me to find the time to read certain books, you know, and I get very stressed out and I feel super bad. That's why like, I love when re authors reach out to me and ask me to review books, but I also am very anxious about it because I can't get it to it, get it to it straight away. Every single time an author sends me a book, I have never read it that instant. And I've disclosed that since, like ever since I stopped using NetGalley and authors have come out to me and asked me to review a book, I'm like, I definitely want to read it, but I'll just let you know, I won't be reading it for a while. And sometimes they're like, oh, okay. And then other times like, oh yeah, no problem. It's okay. Which is fine. I feel like I should disclose that. <laughs> Uh, because I feel bad if I don't. So anyway, we're gonna talk about uh, the book that I'm going to start out with today because I believe it's getting published any day now and I have not read it yet. <laughs> um, it's getting published on the 18th of January. Probably this video is already past that point. Also, by the way, there used to be books behind me. Um, I'm packing up for moving back to college after winter break. So that's why all the books are gone, by the way, behind me. <laughs> so we're gonna start out with this book that I found to be super interesting that I found on NetGalley and it's called The Virgin Hunt Games Volume 1 by Mel Teshko. Again, this is released on January 18th, so it's probably already out at this point. I will read the summary because I don't really know all that much about it. I knew, do know that it is a sci-fi romance. Earth, year, 2,324. Melody Simmons desperately needs to fill her bank account with credits that could help her family climb out of near poverty. And in the Virgin Hunt games, that means enticing as many hunters as possible to bed her. The downside, billions of viewers from all parts of the galaxy would be watching her fall from virtue with avid interest. Alien Damon Banscott despises everything about the Virgin Hunt games, except for the fact he can now legally destroy his enemy in the games. He is in this only for revenge. Then Damon sees one of the beautiful hunted and for a moment his heart stops beating. He'll fight to the death before allowing another hunter to touch and deflower Melody. But while the hunters get more credits by pleasing their captive mate sexually, the hunted women receive more by finding their pleasure with any of the hunters who aren't their assigned mate hunt is on. That just sounded super duper fun to me. It has great ratings on Goodreads, not a lot of ratings and it's great. So I'm very excited about this. I definitely want to dive into this today. It's only 274 pages so it's quite short and I've been wanting to find more amazing alien romance books. So hopefully that's this fits the bill for that. Okay everyone, excuse the way I look right now. <laughs> I currently have a um flare up on my face when it comes to my acne and I haven't washed my hair in a couple of days so <laughs> this is what we're working with. I am now 50% of the way through the Virgin Hunt games. Oh my gosh you guys. This is literally <laughs> like a dirty alien version of the Hunger Games without there being children involved. 
So basically the way this thing works is that there are nine men and nine women, nine hunters and nine hunted. This takes place in the year like 2000 something something way beyond our time to where now everyone knows that aliens exist and everything and the world olympics that happened on earth have transformed into this which is the virgin hunt games. Each woman represents a color and a hunter draws a like card out of a jar and whatever color he picks that is his hunted and so each hunter is assigned a hunted mate. So the hunters and the hunted have two different goals. The hunters are trying to get their hunted's virginity as soon as possible. The hunted women, um, their goal is to be with any other hunter except their mate in this game situation. And so the longer you escape your mate or not with your assigned mate, the more credits or money you earn and you earn more money by doing other things. So a heroine, she is really needing some money. Her family is about to be destitute. So that's why she put herself in these games. And so our hero of this story does not draw this woman's name, but his sworn enemy who he's come to this games to like kill that's his main purpose of the games not to get money not to get women it's to kill his sworn enemy his sworn enemy draws our heroine's name um but right when our hero sees our heroine he's like i am captivated by her he is tasked to or he tasks himself to protect this woman also be with her to spite his arch enemy who's his fated her who is her fated mate in this game. And he just like can't help but be immediately attracted and intrigued by her and start to slowly fall for her. And she's like all for it. And she's like, you're smoking hot. Um, If I get with you, I'll get more money. So um, let's do this thing. And <laughs> it's so interesting. It's literally like the Hunger Games, they can fight to the death if they want to. They don't have to like, it's not like the Hunger Games where like, last man standing kill everybody it's whoever earns the most money at the end or credits at the end like wins the games or whatever but like they're in this like facility that is like the arena that like people can control and everything there's different levels and different like sceneries in each level it's literally like the arena <laughs> it's very interesting because i'm drawing so many like parallels to the hunger games it's not at all like the hunger games there are just certain things that remind me of the hunger games which is pretty funny so if you want like an alien dirty version of a uh, the Hunger Games, maybe check this one out. <laughs> I'm really loving the chemistry between the two of them. There's about to be a scene with another person in them and I am very excited to read that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm enjoying this way more than I thought I was going to. I don't know, this is my first Net Kelly book in a very long time and Net Kelly books normally put me in a huge anxious mood because I feel very intimidated by having to read it and not in the mood to read it and I'm a very big mood reader. But wow, this book has sucked me in. I started it last night and i'm already at 50 percent and i have to finish it today because the historical romance readathon starts tomorrow so i'm not gonna be reading this past tonight and i need to finish it tonight so we're gonna do that but yes i just wanted to update you and tell you that i am really enjoying this one and i'll tell you what i think about the book after i'm finished with it you say hi come here do you want to say hello she wants to join us oh and here comes willow you want to join us too come here come here or there's Ollie. All of three of them are here. I'm here to tell y'all my thoughts of the Virgin Hunt games. Oh my word. Um, I wrote my review, I posted on NetGalley. I posted it before it releases, which is great. So that's just weight lifted off my shoulders. It doesn't get published until the 18th of January. Um, and it is, I believe the 15th, Yes, I was correct. 15th. Um, so I'm early. Yay. So my thoughts about this. I ended up giving it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. More leaning towards 4. I don't really know. I'm very weird about my ratings. Um, this one was very highly entertaining because I don't know if the author was trying to do this, but it was basically the Hunger Games with less people, with adults, filled with steamy times, with a whole entire different plot, but there was like an arena and people controlling the arena and like um, people killing other people, but that's not the 
goal of the games is to kill other people and it's filled with aliens it doesn't take itself too seriously i don't think and so that was my main like thing about it that i put in my review is like i personally did not like how fast the characters like said i love you or everything but then again, it's a book that only takes place in seven days, so I didn't really expect anything else. And they were in kind of like life or death situations in this arena kind of thing. <laughs> oh, bless you. I, of course, like didn't put my expectations that high when it came to like insta-love and everything. But it's just not my personal preference with how fast it went. If the arena like or the book took place for more than seven days and even a longer period of time, like that would have been a totally different story um and i probably would have liked it more but that would have added more to the book in general so i completely understand like why the author did that and everything it just personally isn't my personal preference um but i found it highly entertaining i've never read a book like that ever i've never really read a book that's like the hunger games that gives me the same feelings but it's an adult version like it was crazy okay if you like the hunger games if you like alien romances and you like steamy times in your books i think you should read this one <laughs> i overall really enjoyed it i really love the talk of alien species because there's like a whole talk about people who are mixed alien species race mixed they're called defectives because they're not pure bread. That's what our hero has been called his whole entire life because his mother is a human woman and his father is the king alien of this king alien species that I cannot pronounce the name of. Um, and so he's been ridiculed his whole life because he is a defective. I really loved the talk about all of that and everything. Um, that was very interesting. I did want more backstory when it came to him and I really wanted to see where he like came from. If there is a book two to this, I want to see them explore like the planet that um, he is from because that's pretty interesting because she's from Earth and we already know everything about Earth. Um, so I wanted more about him and his, um, the dog is playing. <laughs> you can hear them upstairs, they're running around. There they go. <laughs> Oh, they're just having a lot of fun. <laughs> um, anyway, I really enjoyed this and um, I can't wait to see what other books that I read for this video and hopefully I really like those as well. Hello, um, I'm here to update you on a book that I started and I think I'm just gonna DNF and how do y'all do DNFs in NetGalley? I have a question about that. Like, do you just write a review saying you DNF'd it and then not rate it? Because I don't really know what I'm supposed to do about that. I got The Body Painter by Pepper Winters, I believe is the author name, um, a while ago, like over a year ago. NetGalley, it's one of the four books that's on there that I have not read for over a year. The summary is very short and sweet and seemed pretty good where like it's basically the summary of the back of the book is an advertisement that our hero put in i believe like online or the newspaper i don't know saying that he needs a person to paint on he needs a body canvas uh, so somebody willing to stand up for long periods of time doesn't mind not wearing any clothes for a long period of time that kind of stuff and so that's the summary of the back of the book i didn't know anything else going into it i did not know that these characters previously knew each other and previously were together in high school School. he ended up breaking up with her and she comes to the interview warehouse um, that the uh, ad told her about and um, she happens to see Gil there who is uh, her past high school love um, and he is super mean <laughs> he's super mean I'm not that big of a fan of books where like you as the reader don't know what's going on like there's a bunch of instances where the narrator or the heroine because she's narrating a first person will say something she'll be like oh that was an inside knowledge for us or i can't believe he's remembering the past like when he says the word pancakes she goes oh my gosh he remembers pancakes like why can't you describe what the heck pancakes is like i don't understand and i just don't think this writing style is for me i don't like not knowing what is going on like the whole like i'm very 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 confused and i'm on like chapter four i'm pretty sure i'm just gonna put it down um another thing that peeved me that i feel like maybe would have been a i don't even think it would have been addressed in the book or not is the first line in the ad that he put out is the person who volunteers for him to paint on must be skinny like what is the point of that why does somebody need to be skinny for you to paint on them like why that really irked me. So yeah, um, I'm probably gonna DNF this. I have to figure out how I'm gonna do that in NetGalley, just like write why I didn't 
rate it or something like that um so what do y'all do about books that like you don't want to read anymore that's on your net galley because if you say like you're not gonna rate the book or you're not gonna like read it it like goes against your like percentage score or whatever on net galley so please give me all the details and information about net galley because i have no idea um anyway that was just a little checkup um, of me telling you I did not finish a book. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess I'll update y'all when I finally do start another book that hopefully I will really like. Hi everybody, it's been quite a while since you've seen me for this vlog specifically. Um, it's been maybe like three months, not gonna lie. <laughs> I had a plan to post this in January and that did not end up happening. Uh, sometimes I'm not in the mood to read arcs or one of the arcs that are in my list just isn't floating my boat at the moment. <laughs> um, so I've decided to hop back on the arc train and whenever I feel like it, I will add to this video. <laughs> um, so the one that I picked next for me to read is The Kiss by M. Robinson. This is the first book in the Playboy Pact. This is M. Robinson's first rom-com i was contacted through tiktok she reached out to me on tiktok and asked if i could read this book and review it and i said yes because it sounded pretty cute and she also very graciously sent me two other of her darker angstier romances that i can't wait to dive into but she specifically sent me the arc request for this book so that's the one i'm going to be reading even though i'm kind of more interested into her like darker stuff because she says she's more used to that um but this is like her first toe into the um what's the word for it the rom-com there you go rom-com uh i guess like maybe like sweeter funnier ones uh but yeah this was released in February whoops I told her that I would not be able to get the review done on time because I think that they wanted or she wanted the review done at a certain date and that's when I had a bunch of exams and like it just got away from me so I'm gonna read you the summary for it um because I personally don't remember the summary because it's been again months since I've checked out this book what happens when you make a pact with your boys to stay stay single and never fall in love well you get the playboy pact we were friends her and i best friends it was easy simple comfortable that was our dynamic we had a system and understanding an unspoken arrangement we were there for each other through thick and thin we had an unbreakable bond nobody understood our friendship because a guy and a girl couldn't just be friends without emotions getting involved right without noticing everything shifted and i was experiencing all these new feelings jealousy possessiveness she's mine for the first time in my life mila wasn't merely a girl i trusted and hung out with on a regular basis she had become the woman i was in love with so i guess this is a friends to lovers uh some tags in here say that it is also a college romance um i'm worried because some of them say ya which i don't think it's ya I assume not. Okay, I'm reading some of the reviews here. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. I shouldn't have read the reviews, but apparently their jokes are kind of crude or the rom-com part of it. People isn't everyone's favorite because the jokes are kind of crude and sexual in nature. <laughs> so, um, we'll see. I really don't want to not like this book. If I don't end up liking this book, I'm definitely going to try out one of her darker books because everyone that so far that i've read reviews for that haven't given it that high of a rating um say that they much prefer her earlier books the darker ones um so i'm not gonna say that this is gonna be a miss for me if i don't like it but um i'm gonna try it out and we're gonna see what i think okay everybody it is two days later and i have finished the kiss by m robinson <laughs> okay <laughs> i understand everyone's reviews now that left those reviews and i agree i feel like since the friend group that was in here was mostly made of guys that that automatically meant that all of the jokes would be sexual and crude in that nature because that was all that they talked about and i know that's probably more to conversations and friendships than how many times you can get with a girl or how big your thing is and just like the crude jokes that happen in there i i just felt like there's more to even a guy friendships relationship than just talking about that kind of stuff i mean i mean like i may be reaching for it or maybe i'm not making sense or that's not true because i'm personally not a guy and i don't 
I don't talk about stuff like that. <laughs> uh, I know this is, this is rom-com, um, and this is like her first dip into the rom-com subgenre of romance. There were only two instances that made me laugh in this whole book, but they did make me laugh out loud, which is um, a big, a big thing for me. <laughs> One of the scenes that really made me laugh is something I can just really relate to. They like, they're like walking in like this uh, gated off wooded area, kind of like a lake area. And like she's really nervous because it's like a no trespassing sign and her stomach gets sick like she gets she her stomach starts to feel horrible because of how nervous she is and how anxious she is and she really needs to go to the bathroom and he's like making fun of her about how she needs to go take a number two and she's like yelling at him and is like I need to go now like that part was hilarious to me I thought that was hilarious all the other like jokes in here like were all sexual not really all that funny to me at all like it wasn't that's just my again that's my personal preference though you may think differently everyone has different tastes that was just me i don't enjoy like the crude boyish jokes you know also i just i don't really like jealous heroes like jealous heroes aren't really my thing i know there are a lot of other people's thing the alpha jealous hero not my jam like i'm more like the the sweeter kind i guess i like i just i don't like when jealousy is put into play at all i don't like when there's other characters put in for the other love interests for them to be jealous of like i don't enjoy reading about that um and so our hero was honestly jealous all of the time even when he claimed that like oh there's no romance between us we're just best friends but he's constantly acting jealous and it just like peeved me a little bit i know i'm like talking about a lot of negative stuff here but I really needed to let this off my chest and like talk about why it this book did not work for me there's this whole thing about this guy and this girl they're like best friends right until one day that they're not and they kiss and they finally do it you know and they're like oh my gosh my whole thing my whole like issue is like I don't really like when the friends to lovers thing is sparked by them sleeping together just because you sleep together then you realize that that's not just a friend like i don't really like i don't know i don't like that i like the more like emotional inner monologue um like feelings coming up not from being with someone in bed you know like i like those feelings to happen outside of the bedroom when they realize that they're more than just a friend to them because personally i just i would not want that like i don't want someone to value me whether or not i'd be a good partner in life based on whether I can sleep with them or not or be a good bed partner or not like that does not appeal to me and also for it being their first kiss and first time together like there was no awkwardness at all or laughing or them thinking oh this is weird this is my best friend it was just like full on doing it with like no awkwardness or like funny moments woven in there or like discussion on that and like i felt like that could have added to the story like i feel like it would have been more organic when it came to a friends to lovers but there's this whole issue with um i think i said in the summary how oh she's trying to get with one of his friends or whatever and like i hated that i hated that subplot so much i don't want to i don't want to spoil it but like this this other guy is like pissed me off like the whole time for his reasoning for doing all of it getting with her and trying to get with her and it's just like it it pissed me off like i was like why did that need to happen like no 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 it didn't need to happen and also there's just a few things that weren't aren't my thing there's like this huge miscommunication thing at like that was the conflict was a miscommunication and just like people not confronting their issues and talking out their issues and being little wimps and not talking about their issues just like avoiding people and ghosting people and i'm like why you're supposed to be mature adults also this was another issue for me they're supposed to be in their mid-20s like mid 20s and it's like they're 18 or 17 and they're not like really uh like the, way that, the way that they acted i don't enjoy time jumps and the end was just time jump after time jump after time jump and like the time jumps were pointless to me like they didn't need to happen like why can't it all happen at once like there was no time jump needed <laughs> i will say i was highly invested in the story it was entertaining i did not want to put the book down i wanted to know what happened but there were just things in there that kind of i just not my cup of tea not my thing and like i just feel like the author needs to like refine her idea of a rom-com more possibly because most of it was not 
funny for me because most of it was filled with gross boy jokes that I don't like. And if them also, if you know the majority of romance readers are women, like they are women. And I feel like if you don't cater to that, like I don't feel like most women would also find these jokes funny because most of them are boyish, guyish, crude jokes. And like, I just, I, I didn't care about them and they weren't funny to me. The only funny part for me was the pooping in the woods scene because that was hilarious to me. But other than that, like nothing really. So I'm leaning on a two or a 2.5 at this point, which is sad because this author seems like an amazing person. And I definitely am going to be reading her other books. She gave me uh, two of her other books to check out and I feel like they could be better than the rom-com because I did not like the crude gross language, you know, and like the friends to lovers wasn't all that believable to me, in all honesty. The whole sleeping together and then automatically you're in love with them, like, or you realize you're in love with them and it's just like, I don't, I don't see it. And I love friends to lovers romances. I love them so much. My favorite romance book of all time, Radiance by Grace Draven, that is an angsty, slow burn friends to lovers that I'm obsessed with. And like, I feel like all friends to lovers books should revolve around that or like base it off of that. Like how slow and well-developed and how they really grew as friends together and everything. Also my whole thing with the friends to lovers in this book specifically is like their friendship. I didn't even like, believe it all that much th at the time either because all it was filled with was crude jokes about one another and just past anecdotes about what happened in their past when they were kids and like th that was their friendship like what else i just i didn't get it i didn't get it unfortunately um which stinks but i'm definitely gonna be checking out her other books and i think that those probably be better than this one just because i did not like all of the little elements in here and all of the other books that she sent me don't have a friends to lovers or a um rom-com aspect in them so maybe it'll be different i don't know i don't want to bash on this author i don't because i i think she's an amazing person i love her tiktoks they're really fun but like personally this does not work for me and i'm gonna be honest about a book that i review so yeah hi guys so i started my next arc a part of this vlog this is the one of like four books that uh that are really 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 old books that were on my neck alley um and i ended up finding an audiobook of it on libby which makes me want to read it more because uh, audiobooks are way more appealing than just reading a book for me that is the dating charade by melissa ferguson i think i'm like only like two hours of the way through the audiobook. I think of the audiobook's like seven hours. So, so far, all that I know about this book is that it is a romance between a woman named Cassie and what's his name? What's his name? Jet. Cassie is actually older than Jet. Jet knew Cassie in high school. Jet was a freshman when Cassie graduated. He always thought she was really cute and sweet. Um, but Cassie right now is going through kind of like a a crisis moment because uh, she's just done with online dating and men in general because of like the horrible dates that she's been on recently. But then her friend uh, gets a hold of her dating app and ends up like messaging Jet or Jet messages her. And um, he's like, oh my gosh, this is the girl I had a crush on in high school. And he goes to like meet up with her at this place. And she's like, I'm sorry, I did not set up a date. My friend must've done something. But that's so far where I am right now. And I feel like, like he's wanting to pursue her without being creepy, obviously. And he's like, I want to pursue her, but I don't want her to think I'm a creep. <laughs> her job is like uh, taking care of um, like a children's home or like a teen home. And uh, he works at the fire department across the street. So he's a firefighter. Um, so that's all I'm all I have so far for it. That's all I can remember at the moment. Um, so I think I'll just update you when I'm done with it because this vlog is a little bit long at the moment. So I'll just update you whenever I'm done with it. So far I'm really enjoying it. So far it's on the road to a four. My friends who have read this book in Goodreads haven't given it above a three. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, so far it's really, really cute though. Okay, everybody, it is gonna be the end of this vlog. I'm going to wrap it up. I ended up completing The Dating Charade by Melissa Ferguson a couple days ago. First, I just wanna say the audiobook for this specifically the um female narrator because there's a male and a female narrator wasn't really my favorite thing ever i liked her voice and everything but there were a lot of unnecessary like breaths and things included in the audiobook if that makes sense and so just those certain things in the audiobook uh sucked me out of the story sometimes quite often actually from the female narrator's perspective but i thought that they did a great job for 
what they did. I overall really love the story that this book told. However, this is not a romance book. <laughs> this is not a romance book. This is more of just a fiction adult fiction book more so talking about family than romance romance is definitely a side plot in here if the main focus of your book is not the romantic couple it is not a romance book the main aspect of this book was family both characters in this relationship are going through some i don't want to say struggles but like curveballs they did not expect when it comes to family and children specifically both of them are put in a position where they have to have guardianship each of them over three children. The male in this book, he has to have guardianship or gets guardianship of his niece and nephews. Um, his sister just dumps him on their his doorstep one day and walks away. Our heroine in here, she runs this teen home and one of her mostly cherished, uh, like, I don't wanna say favorite, but like kind of like favorite teens that she uh, checks up on all the time. Uh, her and her two younger sisters were just taken out of their home and I believe CPS was called because they have been home alone for weeks and there's like a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and this 14-year-old. And so then she really wants to take in these kids. And so, and then both of the people, both of the people in the couple, the woman and the man, they think the other person hates kids and doesn't want kids in a relationship. And so they're too chicken to tell one another that they have these kids in their lives now and it just that bugged me to no end that they couldn't get enough balls to go tell this person that i have these kids now i am in love with them and they are my everything and i won't tell you about them because i'm afraid you're scared of kids who the f cares if you're if you're if someone you're dating is scared of kids if you love those kids who cares then don't be with them your kids should be over the person you're Date, been dating for only two weeks. Like that bugged me a lot. I did not love the romance in here at all. The romance, them lying to each other, them keeping secrets from each other, them not talking, communicating really bugged me. But I love the talk of family and adoptive family and wanting these kids in their lives. That's what I loved about this book. If that wasn't in here, if that, if, oh my gosh, if that wasn't the main focus of the book, man, what I, I would have hated this. Um, I did not like the romance part in here at all. <laughs> I loved the kids in here. The kids were amazing. The kids were great. I love kids in books. I know not a lot of people do. I love kids in books. I felt like this book was really realistic in the portrayal of children. I work with children. I am studying to be a teacher. I've worked in daycare centers. I've been a nanny. Children are basically my passion in life. And so I felt like the representation of children in here was well, well done, well done. The ending of this book really left me reeling as well. The ending was very not resolved and we did not get a lot of information about the ending of the book and it just, it bugged me, <laughs> it bugged me. So um, with that all being said, I think I am just going to be giving this book a three or 3.5 star. I have not solidified my rating yet. So it seems like the only book that I really liked in this video was The Virgin Hunt Games. Um, <laughs> I really like the dating trade, but don't go into it thinking it's gonna be a romance. That's my only thing. I don't recommend this to people who are wanting a romance book because I did not like the romance in here at all. And then the other two books, The Kiss and The Body Painter, I DNF The Body Painter, not my thing. If you like The Body Painter, good for you. I did not. And um, The Kiss by M. Robinson, I am going to be giving M. Robinson's books another try her other books her more darker stuff i feel like i would really like that so those are four books four arcs that are all of them are already out uh so i didn't really read them in advance like i wanted to um but yeah if you want to check out any of these books please let me know down below tell me your thoughts on any of them if you've read any of them also let me know if your opinion or thoughts of these books are different than mine please let me know and again all of these are already released so be sure to go check them out if they interest you but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i'll see y'all see you in my next one bye y'all